Declaration of KPTM RATP EDTP. We, KPTM, RATP, and BDTP, declare under penalty of perjury that the following is true and correct to the best of our knowledge and recollection. We are a family from Ecuador. R and B are siblings, and K is our cousin. K is 16 years old and was born on R is 16 years old and was born on B is 14 years old and was born on The three of us crossed into the United States by land about five days ago on or about June 14, 2019 The immigration police found us and took our names, our ages, and our dates of birth they told us that we could only have one layer of clothing and they threw away the rest of our clothes in the garbage. They took our shoelaces, the drawstrings from Kate's pants, and all of our belongings. They took our money, wallets, and phones and gave us a ticket so we could get it back someday. The officers took us to a place called Gallelera. It was extremely cold there. R was separated from us, which made us all feel extremely sad and scared. We were put into very small rooms and detained there for about five hours. K and B were detained with boys and R was detained with girls. Then officers took the three of us to the place where we are now. We have been here at the Clinton Detention Center for about five days. R has been separated from us here, which makes us all so very sad. This morning, when the lawyer from the Flores team asked to meet with us, is the first time that the three of us have been together since we arrived here. We miss each other very much. Since arriving at Clint, we have been detained in a space that is separated by a chain link fence. The girls are on one side of the chain link fence, the boys are on the other side. At first, the officers tried to separate K and B, but after we explained that we are cousins, they let us stay together. But they separated us from R. We can see R through the fence and she could see us, but we are never permitted to hug each other or hold hands or even talk with each other. We are not permitted to go near the fence. If any child goes near the fence, the guards yell at us. They scream, you cannot be here. It is very scary when they yell. One time when a boy approached the fence to talk with a girl, the guard screamed at him. The next time you will have a problem. The guard grabbed the boy by the neck and dragged him away. We have never seen this boy again. We do not know what happened to him. It is terrifying to be here. When we first arrived here, there were too many children in the space where we are detained. Perhaps there were about a hundred boys and dozens of girls there. It felt very crowded. Yesterday, the guards took away most of the boys and some of the girls. We think that there are about only 37 boys left. There are still many girls left in detention here. It is hard to know the number of girls because they are so many. Some children are here for a very long time, such as 17 days. One boy begged the guards if he could please be deported because he could not bear to be here any longer. The guards told him no. The guards told him that he had to be detained here 15 days more. There are very young children who are here all by themselves for many days. In the cell for boys, there is a four-year-old and his brother who is maybe seven or eight years old. They have been here for about 13 days. They do not have anyone to care for them. In the cell for girls, there are girls as young as three and four years old who do not have anyone to care for them. 
Every day we are locked in a space nearly all day. The hours here feel eternal. There is nothing for us to do here. We can just sit on our mats. We are woken up at 5 a.m. each day. There's no television. We look at the computers that the guards have to watch the passing of the minutes. Sometimes we pray. Sometimes we think, when will it be time to eat? We are hungry nearly every day. There is not enough food. We are given meals three times a day in the same detention space. We cannot eat at any other time. There are no snacks. For breakfast, we are given oatmeal, pudding, and juice. For lunch, we are given one cup of instant noodles that can be cooked in water for three minutes, plus juice. For dinner, we are given juice, a cookie, and one small burrito with beans and sometimes with meat. We do not know what would happen if we asked for more food. We are too scared to ask. The only times when we could leave our cell is when we need to use the bathroom or during a very limited outdoor time. There are nine toilets total for the girls and boys to use. The guards get mad if a child needs to use the toilet more than once in a short period of time. Instead of letting the child use the bathroom a second time, the guards just close the door. When the door is closed, no child is permitted to open the door. All the time, we must ask the guards to, guards for permission to open the door. They tell us it is the law. There is time to go outside for about 30 minutes each day, and children should be playing. But we do not play outside at those times. We are hungry, and we need to conserve our energy to stay alive here. During the day, our cells are too hot. The roof is made of tin metal. During the night, it is too cold. There is a large ventilator on one side of the cell. The ventilator produces water, which leaks onto the floor. Sometimes there is a lot of water. Since arriving, B and K have slept each night on a mat on the floor. When we first arrived, we had to share a mat because there were not sufficient mats for all the boys. There are triple bunk beds, but we do not want to sleep there because it is too cold on the beds at night. Most of the boys are sleeping on mats on the floor. Sometimes the water from the ventilator comes close to the mat where B and K sleep. At night, all three of us wake up repeatedly because we are cold and hungry and because guards come in the middle of the night and yell the names of children who need to be transferred. R has not had a single opportunity to bathe or shower since crossing the border. K and B were permitted to shower for five minutes yesterday and the day before yesterday. We are all wearing the same clothes since we crossed the border. R has not had any opportunities to wash her clothes. K and B try to wash their t-shirts during one of their showers. All of us were allowed to brush our teeth just two times since we crossed the border. There are many sick children here. They take them away. We do not know where the sick children go. When children ask officers if they can please be permitted to call their families, the officers refuse. We were only permitted to call our family members twice since we arrived here. Our first call was just after we arrived. That time, we were only permitted to make an extremely short call to get our parents' address. And then the officer hung up the phone and did not let us speak with our parents. Our second phone call was yesterday and it was only five minutes long. This is not enough time to speak with our parents. We wish we could speak with our parents for longer times and more often. Our parents all live in Brooklyn. Kay's father has been in the United States for seven or eight years. 
R&B's father has been in the United States for about 13 years, and our mother has been here for seven or eight years. We want to live with our parents, and our parents want us with them. We do not understand why we are still here, or the process for leaving this place. No one told us anything about when we can leave. Some of the guards here are mean. We are scared of them. It is better to stay quiet with them and not get on their bad sides or make them angry. There are a lot of mosquitoes here. The mosquitoes are big and they bite us all the time, even on, the, even on our legs under our pants. We do not know if there are any counselors, social workers, or mental health professionals here. When we arrived here, we had to sign form in English. We could not read those forms. We do not know what the form said. We have not received an explanation of the rules here. We have not received any information about our rights under the Flores Settlement Agreement. Kay has drawn a diagram of the space where we are de detained. He has labeled where the boys are held, where the girls are held, and where the rejas, the chain link fence, is. We, KPTM, RATP, and BDTP, swear under penalty of perjury that the above declaration is true and correct to the best of my abilities. This declaration was provided in English and was read back to us in Spanish a language in which we are fluent. Certification of Translation I, Elora McCurgy, certify that I am fluent in English and Spanish and that I read the above declaration to KPTM, RATP, and BDTP in Spanish executed the 19th day of June in Clint, Texas. Elora, Elora McCurgy, Columbia Law School. Exhibit 58. Declaration of MJRR. I, MJRR, number. Declare under penalty of perjury that the following is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and recollection. My name is MJRR. I was born on, I'm 17 years old. I am from El Salvador. On or about June 1st, 2019, my mother and I crossed the bridge to enter the United States. We presented ourselves to border patrol agents who then separated us. They refused to explain why they were doing so. Since that moment, I have not known where my mother is. I have not known if my mother was in the United States or elsewhere or even if she was alive. I have been extremely worried about her. After they separated us, I was taken to a detention center people called La Casita. All the other people detained in the facility were 18 and older. They were all older than me. I was very uncomfortable. I was there for several days. They did not make me let, they did not let me make any phone calls there. I was put in a cell with a lot of men, too many to tell. It was way too full and extremely cold. There were no beds, no mats, only the concrete floor. The lights were all on all night. There was not enough room for everyone to lie down, so I had to hunch over while sitting and crumple up in a ball to try to sleep. I barely got any rest or sleep. It was very dirty there. Our cell was filthy. It was never cleaned while I was there. There were toilets and a sink to wash your hands, but no soap. I did not have the opportunity to shower there at all. It wasn't long before I got sick with a high fever. However, I didn't get the opportunity to see a doctor until my second day of fever. I was given pills to bring my fever down. I don't know what kind of medicine it was. At La Casita, food was not given out frequently and I was always hungry. I received food about two times a day. It was always miniature tacos. I didn't ask for more food, I was afraid to ask. I believed the guards wouldn't give me more because of the way I saw them treating other men. I felt really bad there. I was worrying about my mother the whole time. 
About several days, I was transported to the Clint station by car in the middle of the night. The drive here took about an hour. I was relieved to be out of the first place. The conditions here are better. There is more space here, and I am with boys closer to my age. I share a room with many boys. There are no windows. I do not know how many boys there are in my room. There are four boys in my room who are five years old. Here I have a mat, and I am able to lay down. I am able to sleep more here because they turn the lights off at night, then turn them back on in the morning. It's also not as cold as it was at the casita. I get more food at Clint, but I'm so hungry sometimes. It's the same food every day. Oatmeal, a cookie, and juice for breakfast. Instant ramen soup and juice for lunch. And a burrito, juice, and cookie for dinner. Sometimes the burrito has meat. Sometimes it's only beans. There's no milk, fruit, or vegetables here. I haven't seen a doctor since arriving here, but I have seen a nurse. I didn't have a chance to bathe in the first location at all. At Clint, I have been able to bathe once for two minutes. I have not had a chance to wash my clothing since crossing the border. They have not given me a toothbrush or toothpaste. I've been allowed to brush my teeth three times since crossing the border. Here, I've been allowed to go outside for a bit, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Sometimes I'm only allowed outside once a day. When I do get to go outside, I play ball with other kids. To date, I have not received any information about my rights under the Flores case. I do not know if there are any social workers or counselors here. Several minutes ago, I had my first opportunity to make a phone call since crossing the border. The legal team from Flores, who are talking with me today, told me that they were able to find my mother and that I had been released and that I would be released to her soon. They arranged for me to call her a few minutes ago. I am so happy that I have been finally able to connect with my mother. I wish I could have been with her the whole time from June 1st through today. I, MJRR, swear under penalty of perjury that the above declaration is true and correct to the best of my abilities. This declaration was provided in English and was read back to me in Spanish, a language in which I am fluent. MJRR. Certificate of Translation. I, Elora Mukherjee, certify that I am fluent in English and Spanish and that I read the above declaration to MJRR in Spanish. Executed this 17th of June in Clint, Texas. Elora Mukherjee, Columbia School of Law. Exhibit 53. Declaration of J. V. S. M. Mother of I. M. C. S. I, J. V. S. M. Declare under penalty of perjury that the following is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and recollection. My name is J. V. S. I was born on I am the mother of IMCS, who was born on. We are from El Salvador. I crossed the border into the United States by land on or about. I crossed with my daughter, I and my 13 year old sister. We were walking, then approached by border patrol officers in cars. They took us in a car to a detention center called a Hielera, an icebox, where we were detained for one or two hours. Then officers called our names and brought us here in a van. There was no car seat for I. She sat on my lap. The van had about 10 people in it, mostly girls. My daughter, my sister, and I have been in the Clint Detention Center for 17 days. I feel sad here because I should be with my family. I miss my family and I really want to leave this place. I wish I could live with my father in Oklahoma. 
He has been in the United States for about 10 years. I have had a hard time here at Clint because both my daughter and my sister were sick. My daughter had the flu for five days and my sister had the flu for seven days. My daughter had a fever, a cough, an infection in her eyes and ears and a rash on her stomach, back and legs. During this time we were isolated in a room with other girls who were sick. We are not permitted to bathe or shower regularly here. We have only been permitted to shower two times in 17 days. Our showers are only five minutes long. My daughter's rash was terrible, perhaps because she couldn't bathe and clean her skin. For the two times we could shower, we had access to soap. We have no access to soap at any other time. We're not permitted to brush our teeth regularly here. The doctors let us brush our teeth two times in 17 days. We do not have toothbrushes or toothpaste at any other time. We're locked in a room for most of the day. The room has no windows. It is very crowded with about 50 of us crammed together. All of us are 17 years old or younger. Some of the children are one or two years old, like my daughter. There are about five mothers with children, including me. Some of the children are only five years old and do not have their mothers or fathers to care for them. In the room, there are a few mats and cots but no beds or mattresses. For the past several nights, my daughter, my sister and I have been sleeping on the cement floor because there's no other place to sleep. There are not sufficient mats and cots for everyone. Before my daughter got sick, we were able to sleep on a mat, but then we had to be isolated with the others who were sick. When we were allowed to return to the room, Someone else had occupied the mat that we used to sleep on. We now have no choice but to sleep on the cement floor. Each night about 15 girls sleep on the floor, sometimes in the middle of the night at about three or 4 a.m. the guards will come to call people, which wakes everyone up. During the day, the guards often close the door of our room. When this happens, my daughter feels so sad and starts to cry. She says she wants to leave, she wants to go out. I feel so sad too. There is no privacy for using the toilets. Everyone can see me when I'm using the toilets. At times I feel so embarrassed because there are boys watching me when I'm using the toilets. Every morning we wake, then get breakfast, then return to the room until lunchtime, then get dinner, then stay in the room. We just sit around in the room all day. There's nothing else we can do. Only three times over 17 days, I have been allowed to go outside. Each time I was allowed outside for only 20 minutes. I wish I could go outside with my daughter more often. At times I'm hungry. Every day we're given the same food, oatmeal and juice for breakfast, soup, a cookie, and a juice for lunch, and a bean burrito, yogurt, and juice for dinner. There's no milk available for my daughter, my sister, or me. Sometimes I ask for more food and the guards refuse to give it to me. You have had your ration. They tell me, my daughter does not like the oatmeal. For 17 days, my daughter and I have been wearing the same clothing. We do not have opportunities to wash our clothes. Our clothing is dirty. I wish we could change our clothes. I have not received any information about when I will leave this place. 
I have asked an official when I'm going to leave because I have been here for so long. He only told me to have patience. It seems the children who are here at Clint without their own children are often detained about 10 days. Their time here can be longer if they sick. So that these kids are here for about two weeks. But children like me who are here with our own children are detained longer. One teenage girl with a child here, um, a child was here for 23 days. Another teenage girl with a child was here for 21 days. I do not know why they are here for so long. There are some children here without their mothers who are very young, only two or three years old. The guards tell other girls to take care of these youngsters. Even though some of the girls do not want to take care of such young children, there are a lot of children who are five or six years old who are here without their mothers. One day I asked a teenager if she was the mother of a young baby girl who was only about six months to a year old. The teenager said no. She said that she had to take care of the baby because the baby's mother was pregnant and had to be taken to the hospital. The baby was here without her mother for eight or nine days. I felt very upset to learn this terrible information. I would never want my own daughter to be here alone without me. I have not seen this baby for a number of days. I wish I had more opportunities to call my family. About five times, I asked guards if I could call my father. The guards let me call him about three times in 17 days. For only five minutes each time, I wish I could speak with my father more often and for longer times. Sometimes the guards say that they are too busy to let me make a phone call. The guards here are both men and women. Some of them are mean. They do not smile. I do not know if there are any counselors, social workers, or mental health professionals here. I have not received an explanation of the rules here. I have not received any information about the rights that my daughter, my sister, and I have under the Florida Settlement Agreement. I, JVSM, swear under penalty of perjury that the above declaration is true and correct to the best of my abilities. This declaration was provided in English and was read back to me in Spanish, a language in which I'm fluent. Date, June 17, 2019. Certification of translation. I, Alora Muharji, certify that I'm fluent in English and Spanish and that I read the above declaration to J BSM in Spanish, executed the 17th of June in Clint, Texas. Elora Mukherjee, Columbia School of Law.